here to do. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10, of course, verses 8 and 9 are the very famous salvation verses that we use. But verse number 10 says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. God says, I want you working. You're my workmanship. I created you. I want you now doing the works that I have before you to do. Get the works done. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, turn if you would to 1 Chronicles chapter 22. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. God's called us to work. The, what the, and this passage lines up perfectly with what we we're already looking at this morning, saying, you know, We've seen this before, whether you sleep or wake, you know, if you're in Christ, we see here, you know, in a, in a great house, there's a vessel of gold and silver and also wooden of earth. And we see at the judgment seat of Christ that some people are going to have works of, of wood, hay, and stubble, and they're just going to get burned up, but they're still saved. I mean, they're still going to heaven. And then other people are going to have, you know, gold, silver, precious stones, and they're going to abide, and you're going to get reward for that. And he's saying here, in a great house, you're going to have people doing both. You're going to have some people who are actually doing something that's worth something to God, that God wants you doing, investing your time wisely. And then you're going to have other people who are saved, but they're really not spending their time very wisely. It just would. Hey, we all. If you want to be a vessel unto honor, though, if you don't want to be just, this, just a vessel unto dishonor, he says, purge yourself from these, be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, which means set apart and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. You're going to need to start getting the sin out of your life to be used more and more and more by God. Prepare yourself to be used of God. Prepare to do the work. If you're going to prepare to do work for the Lord, guess what you have to do? You have to prepare to set aside time to do work for the Lord, not just expecting God to just somehow magically change your schedule for you. I mean, I wouldn't, if God has to go in and change your schedule for you, it's probably not going to be very pleasant for you. If he says, hey, son, I want you to work for me today. And you've just got too many other things going on in your life. Because if God really wants you to do the work, he can make sure that you end up with the time to serve him. But if you have to wait for him to make sure that you're going to have the time to do it, it may not be the way you want it to happen. It may not be the most pleasant way. We want to make sure that, that we are ahead of the game, that we've got our heart right with God, that we've got, we're prepared our heart to serve him, we're prepared to do the work, and we are preparing to do everything that he wants us to do, uh, prepared on every good work. We also ought to be preparing our children. Look in 1 Chronicles chapter 22. We're going to see David prepared all that he could for Solomon to succeed at the work that he had to do. He's not only, you know, preparing himself to work, he's preparing his son to be able to do the work of the Lord and getting ready for him. That is valuable to him. Now you could get some overlap here, right? As you're preparing to, to supply your children with the best advantage they can possibly have to grow up and do even more works than you ever were able to do. You know, there might be some other things that go along with that that you just happen to get prepared along the way. Now, what, so what I mean is like, um, we see here with, you know, even in my life, I, I think of my children and I'm really thankful that I had gotten right with God and started doing the work before they were born because now they're getting an advantage that I never really had because I didn't, you know, I grew up unsaved. So now they're going to be getting, you know, they're not going to be allowed to listen to all the music I was allowed to listen to. They're not able to get into nearly the amount of worldly stuff that I was involved in that kind of led me on a bad path and caused a lot of other things to happen in my life that I wish never happened. But they've got a better start. So I'm going to be preparing them, not only preparing myself to work, but through my preparation to work, I'm going to be preparing them to get even more done. I want them to have more knowledge. I want them to understand the Bible more. I want them to have a good prayer life. I want them to have all of these things ready to go. So that way, when they're old enough to do their own work, they can excel and do 10 times more than I've ever done. 
because they've been prepared. And it's important for us to think about the future and prepare our children to do the work. Of David had the same mentality. He wanted to do this great work for God. He wanted to do everything. God said, no. He said, okay, well, I'm going to prepare my son to do it then. I'm going to make sure he has everything just at his disposal, ready to go. No reason for him to fail. If he fails, it'd be really difficult for, you know, we want to make it so our kids, it's going to be really difficult for them to fail and easy to succeed because we've worked hard enough to prepare them to keep going. I mean, we don't know anything about, a lot of this has to do with, because we feel like we're in the last times, right? Christian prepping. We see a lot of people prepping for all the disasters and stuff. We really don't know. I mean, do I believe we're in the last times? Yes, I do. Do I think we're going to see Jesus Christ return in my generation? Probably. I think that I'll still be alive when he comes back. But I don't know that. I don't know that. I'm going to work as hard as I would, assuming that he may be coming back very, very soon. But I'm also going to work with the understanding that maybe my children will live their lives out before he comes back. So on having that understanding, I'm going to make sure they're as well prepared as possible to go through everything that I think we will probably end up going through. That they're even better prepared. 